So I'm delighted to be with Amber. I will try to pronounce your surname as best as possible. Chidagaski. Um, Chidagaski, uh, that's correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Almost there. <laughs> Amber, you, you're based partly in Liverpool, um, partly yeah. in London. Uh -huh. um, so your experience at the moment, and I just wanted to touch base with you reflecting on 2017 going forward yes. into yeah. uh, 2018. Yeah. So huge thanks for joining myself. Would I be right in saying that your primary role in property is sourcing? That's correct. Yeah, okay. that's correct. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And predominantly in the Liverpool area. That's right. Within about yeah. 50 miles of Liverpool. That's right. Yes. Oh, sorry. Within about 50 miles? 15 miles. Oh, 15 miles. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, now, you're, you were telling me the story about... Um, online auctions one of the properties came through an online auction site that's right um, yeah yeah so you're describing how you've sourced in the last um two months five five properties um so these properties are quite small in size uh, none of them are huge in size in terms of uh room layout two bedrooms two bathrooms is typical is that right amber yeah no no it's usually two up two down and not not always two bathrooms. Sometimes only one bathroom. On one occasion, they're in bathrooms. Okay. Um, yeah, and, and try to figure it to to um, to be optimal in terms of room by room lettings. And in some of the cases, we're turning them into wait for it six bedroom yeah, that, that, houses. That, that's phenomenal how you can go from a, a, a two two bedroom to a six bedroom um be interested to see those uh, pictures um, yeah now you were describing how one of those uh, properties went for an online auction um so you know i'm interested in all different types of technology uh, yeah. i'm interested in auctions as well i'm a little bit biased um <laughs> partially because i, mean, I have uh, go on say say that again Amber. what we did was we went and viewed this property we really liked it and the agent told us well yeah okay so we're the agent for this however we're selling it through an online auction company that we own so they put us in touch with the online auction company and they gave us a date and a time to go online and bid so you had to bid at a certain time and all of the people bidding had to be on that on online at that moment in time so if there were 20 people viewing it but there were say only four people free on that day to, to bid on it then you get four people bidding on it. So in our case, there had been more than 20, 25 people viewing it, but there were only four people watching that that, that particular auction. Hmm. I was going to say, it is quite tricky, depending on how that auction is done. Now, what was that auction completely blind, i.e. you could not see what someone else online had bid? Or you you could see them you could see them so you knew you be bidding so in the last five minutes the bidding went from fifty thousand to fifty eight and then it went to fifty nine and uh, thirty seconds before the close of the bid my friend who was investing put his bid in and then put his bid in, the auction delayed itself for two minutes other people a chance so every time somebody bids it waits another two minutes to give other people a chance mm. and in the end and we picked it up for 60 but we had to pay six thousand pounds to the auction company for their fee okay so do, do you think there's a skill set in online auctions which is quite different to actually being in a room do you think it's fairly similar amber where do you draw the parallels well, uh, interesting because I went to a lot of auctions uh, locally and I saw this one online and I do think that the skills are all about what you do before the auction. So in the legal pack, viewing the property, looking at all the downsides and you can't really emphasize enough getting friendly with people who the viewings, the auctioneers themselves, what kind of information they'll give you. Mm. When it comes to the, the psychology of online auctions, that um the way my my friend played it was he waited until the last 30 seconds before he jumped in um i don't know if that's a particularly recognized strategy or not um 
certainly I knew I knew of people that were watching that and did not bid. So it really is a question whether you've got the guts to pay the six thousand pounds, five thousand plus VAE to the auction company and whether it's still going to stack up afterwards. Okay. And um, but in terms of the legal pack, so yeah. you know, people listening to this video recording and some of them may have little experience, may have a huge amount of experience, or maybe somewhere in between. And, you know, the key question in terms of legal pack I would ask you is, you know, you're, you're not a trained solicitor as such. You know, people got different perspectives. Do you have yeah. a friendly solicitor that you connect with in Liverpool, or do you base it on the amount of experience you've had in property? How do you do it? So if it were me personally billing for this on my own, I absolutely would have run it by my solicitor in Chester because absolutely, you know, they could write anything. But since my friend had so much experience in purchasing and legal packs and so on, he didn't get it checked by his solicitor. What he did do, though, was he went online to find out what planning had been asked for and what planning had been uh, failed and given. So he went in with all his eyes open, but uh, without a doubt, if it's straightforward, if it seems straightforward, then usually it is. And it's only when something flags up that you haven't seen before, understood before, that's usually when, when you need to start calling lawyers and things. However, we were quite lucky when we did the viewing, the owner of the property dropped the keys off and we met him. We asked him why he was selling and it, and it all added up. It all stacked up. Okay. That, that, that was quite fortunate to bump into him at the same time and yeah. to, to get his uh, perspective as well. Mm -hmm. Look, you know, some people are going to think, you know, looking at different places, uh, you know, Liverpool is one of the places which people do look at a regular basis. Mm -hmm. um, but I know you're coming down from Liverpool to London in uh, January, January the 20th. I don't know if you're going to be in London before that. You're, no. you're, you're going to be at the summit. Um, yeah. what, what are you going to be speaking on? Um, well, I won't be speaking as such, but I'll be um, I'll be enjoying it as an enthusiastic uh, bystander. I mean, for me, obviously, the last summit we went on was it in June or July? July, June, wasn't June, it? June, June. I really, really enjoyed that. I learned a lot from. Um, there was a chap at the beginning, very he was, he, he does boot HMs, and he was talking about how he appropriates land, what he looks for, how he costs it out you know, how you figure in the finance and all of this. And it was a real eye-opener as to how many things you have to think about when you're buying land in order to build on. Then in, in addition to that, I remember clearly uh, Nicole Brenner talking about social media, how she, you know, how she uses different types. She pulled out her Snapchat glasses and, uh, you know, did a 30 seconds on, on Snapchat. Um, it's amazing how some people have really cornered the market in terms of social media and how they're um, how they're bringing money in, um, and then I remember Augusta chaired a panel, development panel, and Tor Portis was talking a lot about that. And um, she since he's now spent a hell of a lot of money on his crowdfunding platform, crowd with us, uh, sorry, uh, invest with us. Yeah, no, crowd, crowd with us is correct. Oh, crowd yeah. with us. Okay. Yeah. Invest with us. I don't know if that's around yet, Amber. Uh, no, crowd with us. And so develop with us. One was develop with us. One was crowd yeah. with us. Yeah, I think they've. I think they've moved it now just to purely crowd with us. I was oh, going okay. to say, Amber, what what happened after the summit in terms of what key takeaway have you implemented? Is it Nicole's social media strategy? Is it literally just someone in a room you met after the event, which you've stayed in contact with for coffee? Yeah, after? yeah, absolutely. I met one person at the event, um, and it was not obvious to me that we were going to be a match at all. We stayed in touch, got her phone number. We met at uh, Houston Station a few times, and it turns out that she's very interested in developing a high cash flowing portfolio, and that she had enough funds to be able to do at least one or two deals. So I. You know, I definitely take my hat off. I met somebody there that potentially is going to be an investor. I was quite pleased with that. Amber, I'd love to continue the conversation. I know it's a little bit uh, squeaky at times, the sound. Yeah, yeah. Um, I was going to say, in, in terms of education going forward, I know, you know, most people listen to Audible as well. Um, yeah. 
in terms of a recommendation for this year in terms of audible for people to continue into the new year what what would you recommend well i absolutely loved the latest two or three books i've listened to one is called the chimp paradox by steve chimp peters Par right yeah i love that one and I, and I have to tell you that particular book has got every single sentence is packed with information there are no stories there are no it's just there one after the other it's mm. literally an instruction manual the other one i'm loving at the moment is called blue ocean strategy blue ocean thinking and it's about these two people that write for harvard business school they're consultants and they teach you how to start a business but how to be completely different so you're going to an area that nobody else has been before two others i love very very much you must listen to one's called in the plex in the plex and that's all about google and their culture and how they started and the other one i love very much is called from zero to one uh, that's from Peter Thiel. Again, another brilliant book on how to start a business and, and become like number one in the industry. I, I have to admit, I, I heard of Blue Ocean Strategy only last night because I was on a podcast uh, recording. Well, I yeah. wasn't on the podcast, but I was listening to it yeah. with uh, Ryan Carruthers and inter right. in interviewing Brad. He mentioned Blue Ocean Strategy, so I, I, I had yeah. to listen to the sample of that one. Um, yeah. Steve Peters, amazing guy. He's been, you know, in, you know, instrumental in in some of the top sports people in the UK. Oh, uh, right. I, I don't want to digress because this yeah. is focused on property rather than sport. Uh, yeah. But Ronnie O'Sullivan is someone who he's worked with, and he's really right. shifted his game. I think he's worked with a number of key cyclists as well. Um, he's yeah. quite an amazing guy. I've never met him personally, but listened to him on no. TEDx, and so. Just to recap, Anne, because one of them I haven't heard. I've heard of uh, Peter Fields, which is from zero to one. Um, yeah. The Chimp Paradox, Dr. Steve Peters. Um, Blue Ocean Strategy. And there was one more in the glue. Have I got that right? In the Plex. In, in the, the Plex. Plex. Yeah. In the Plex. That's one I haven't actually heard. Um, um, quite interesting. And really interesting and, and very, very well like read. It's interesting. It's read with the right tone and the right voice. Um, you learn a lot about Larry Page, Sergio Brin, how they started, how they formed it, how they began the first few months. It's a brilliant, brilliant book. And I think there's some small thing that we can learn from them somehow that we can apply. Uh, by the way, the book Blue Ocean Strategy is not called Blue Ocean Strategy. It's called Blue Ocean Something. And it's a sequel to the first one. And it's the one that helps you implement it. Um, I believe there are some downloads that you can get, some you know charts and things. Um, but I, I have just started that one, and I'm really looking forward to that. Yeah. Just, just to slightly digress again, Amber. In terms of those books, where, where do you find the books? I know you go to Audible, and you you may they yeah. they give you a number of books to look up. Um, yeah. Wh where else do you look for book recommendations? Is it simply Facebook, or do you just Google? Or well, there's a lady called Wendy Whitaker Large. Wendy Whitaker Large. And she sent me an email with the top books that she's read and recommended. And there were 68 on that list. And I had read, and yesterday, only yesterday, I went through the list. And I'd read about 35 of them, had not read about 30 of them. And I added another 30 that I have read. So I think we all need to start somewhere. And certainly online on some of the Facebook forums. I remember Susanna Cole started one about what's your favorite 100 books and things. So they are out there. Sure. And, uh, and, you know, it's a good place to start. But also, I'd really recommend this. And I know it sounds like a really left-field thing to say. But if you go on Udemy, U-D-E-M-Y, Udemy.com. Oh, Udemy. Udemy. It's a big training. There is a, there is a course on there called Learn How to Read 300 Books in a Year. Learn how to read 300 books in a year. And it's absolutely amazing how he gets you to cut to the chase and only read certain sections of the book and all this. And I really do believe you could read a book a day if you follow his strategy. It's probably about 15 quid to buy the course. Okay. And if it is expensive, wait, because they have these days where they sell everything off for 10 or 15 pounds. I was just, just going to ask you, Amber. So huge thanks for those suggestions. You've mentioned those key books. You've mentioned about... Well, we've mentioned Audible, which I'd say yeah. most, most of the audience know about. Yeah. Um, in terms of book strategy on Audible, do you listen at a slightly faster speed than one, or do you listen at one? I normally listen at 1.25. Okay. But sometimes I'm listening to it for a second time. I might put it on 1.5.
Okay, that's interesting. I listened to the Seven Habits of Highly Effective People six times, and it was 18 hours each time. So it's, it's a lot. Okay, so lots we... of, it's a lot of driving. There's a lot of driving. It's a lot of ironing. It's a lot of cooking. <laughs> yeah. No. But also, there are some apps out there, by the way. I'll tell you next time. There's apps out there. You get them for free because they have volunteers reading out the books. And there's an app I can't remember. I will give it to you next time. Well, the next it, time the we do a, the next time we do a video call when we've got a slightly better reception. Um, okay, that'd be great. Okay, I just want to say huge thanks, Amber. I look forward to seeing you on the 20th of January at the That's National right. Development Summit. Is that at the um, Crown, Crown Plaza? Plaza? Okay, all right, brilliant. It's easy to get to in the heart of okay. the city of London. Thanks, okay, Amber. thanks a lot. Then. Take bye care. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye.